All right, so for the next 45 minutes, we're going to just do any sort of review for the last five days worth of curriculum. So if you want, um, just for right now, let's actually, let's just go through it. Um, let's take a look through each day and see if there's anything that you want me to cover. We'll create a list of topics and we're just gonna get as far as we can get in the next 45 minutes. So how do people feel about the computer setup? Is there anything that you want me to go over? We're all set there. Um, Death Grandma on JavaScript? Okay, let's do that. Uh, we talked about the IDE yesterday. We talked about some Linux and uh, Unix commands. <coughs> Feel okay with that? Uh, okay, yeah. I, I got some, some hesitancy. What's going on up there? Uh, actually, don't remember Unix commands. It's just a command line. Uh, it's another word for it. That's oh. Okay. Um, Okay, let's see, take a look at day two. Get in GitHub, you want me to do it again? Would it be helpful? I'm gonna go over branches, which we haven't covered. All right, so get in GitHub branches. Uh, JavaScript fundamentals, feel good? Should be fine. Care programming, um, that should be fine for the rest of the day. Did we talk about Python fun? Did I teach that day? Yes, you did. I did teach that. Uh, if else statements, control flow. Loops. Control flow is, is just if. Uh, that's fine. Array methods, Python and JavaScript array methods. How do we feel about those types of things? Maybe Python. Slightly fuzzy on Python array methods. Getting better. All right, test driven development. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Which challenge would you want to do with that? Then? What, which one is difficult for you? Armstrong yeah. numbers? JavaScript? Yes. <laughs> and this hasn't happened yet. All right, so we have a lot to cover. All right, so uh, we spent three minutes and we are gonna cover these four things. Death Grandma and JavaScript, Git and GitHub branches, these two all combined. Array methods, uh, I will just show this link to you and just basically tell you how I read it and how I would test a few things out and then we're gonna jump to this, otherwise I'm gonna Okay. Death Grandma, let's take a look. <clears throat> Not all the answers. Something else. Uh, Alright, so the way I approach all these things is that I do write the pseudo code out first and then we will translate into regular code afterwards. So, this is a pretty popular uh, challenge. It's fairly difficult, honestly, uh, in JavaScript because of the prompt library that you have to import. So, it's, uh, I'm going to write a program that's going to basically continuously run. It's uh, gonna imitate a grandma who's hard of hearing and follows these constraints. If you input something, it should be responsive with what. If you ask a question with any lo lowercase letters, you just speak up kid. If you talk to her in all uppercase letters, she responds with no nuts, it's 1946. You have to have some something to basically count the number of times that you say goodbye. That's one thing I'm thinking about right away. The first time you say goodbye, she says leaving so soon. The second time she says goodbye, she says later skater and program next. This is an example down over here. I'm just going to take this whole thing. We're going to dump it inside of here. Uh, let's fork this over first. So right now we have run GitHub, which is nothing more than a website. There are other places where Git repositories are stored. And Git repositories we know as just, uh, Git is just a version control software. It's a way that can control different versions of code. There are 16 versions of Death Grandma there because there are 16 commits and I can go forward or backwards at any point. In the case that, you know, let's say that by accident, Marcus says, I'm going to push, I hate that grandma, I'm going to push it to master, I'm going to, you know, basically say like, this challenge is stupid and remove all the files. Because I have all the versions over here, I can always just roll it back to a different version. You don't need to learn how to do that quite yet. We're just practicing how to, you know, fork and to download and everything. So Death Grandma lives at github.com and it lives at Juliet Platoon specifically. So Juliet Platoon owns Death Grandma. 
I don't want to alter this because this is the original one. Like this is the one that we're working on as the master. So you don't want to alter the original Bible. So I'm going to make a photocopy of it. And to my particular user, I've got this cute little emoticon, just making a photocopy. And now you'll see that it doesn't live at Juliet Platoon anymore. It lives at my particular user. Now I made a photocopy and I have like the idea, the idea here is like, I can make one photocopy, this is on my master photocopy, and then I can make other photocopies of my photocopy. And that's what we're about to do. I'm going to clone this now. This is all review. Opening up the terminal by pressing a, a control backtick. The backtick is to the left of the number one sign. I'm gonna CD to my desktop. Maybe you'll have a folder called code or something that you put everything inside of. I just put stuff in the desktop and delete it, but I recommend having a code folder with everything inside of it. I'm gonna run git clone and then paste this link. I know it's a git command because git prepends everything. Git clone means that I'm going to download something from the web on github.com and bring it down to my machine over here. And I did mention github.com is just one of many providers of Git repositories. There's also Bitbucket, there's GitLab, there's, those are the two big ones that come to mind, but GitHub is the biggest one. It was bought out by Microsoft for how much? GitHub, $7.7 billion. $7.5 billion. I did meet the CEO of GitHub when GitHub was signed. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, that person is definitely sailing on a yacht somewhere. Um, so, so I cloned it down from the from the web. I'm going to list out everything on my desktop. Right now, I only have one folder. Is that grandma? I want to change from where I'm at, change directory into that grandma, and you can see I'm currently on the master branch. Now, I forked this over from Juliet Platoon, meaning I made more or less a photocopy of this and brought it over. But there's the good part about Git and GitHub is that there's this concept of what's called branches. And branches is what allows multiple people to work on the same code at the exact same time. So we have to refer to master as like the single point of truth. But let's say that, let's take for instance like Groupon.com. Groupon was created in 2001, probably with one developer. And that one developer became two developers, which became three developers, which became I think they have like 200 developers at this particular point. If they're all working off of um, Juliet Platoon, they have this concept called branches, which is like we can all work on the exact same thing. It doesn't affect the, like, let's say that uh, me, Marcus, and, uh, and, and Justin are working together on Deaf Grandma and off this particular port. If we all start making changes and all start pushing to master around the same time, you can imagine there's going to be quite a few issues. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the photocopy into JM, which we've done, and he's gonna check out what a new branch, I'm gonna check out a new branch, and Justin's gonna check out a new branch. And what branches are is that it's just a separate workstation that's a photocopy of a photocopy. So it's kind of like, if I, I photocopied the original Bible, I passed it off to Marcus, he made a photocopy of my photocopy, I made a photocopy of my photocopy, Justin made a photocopy of my photocopy. We can all mess around with it as much as we want, and it doesn't mess with my original so the way that I'm going to do this, right now we live on the master branch. It's always a little bit dangerous to be on the master branch. So the, the command for it is git checkout dash b. We know it's a git command because of the git in the front. We're going to check out a new branch with this dash b flag called John's solution for Julia. And you'll see that I changed from master into John's solution for Julia. So I've made a photocopy of my master and I'm, I'm safely away from master at this point. I, all I've done is I've just added one. Yeah. So right now, like that created yours, you changed it right there on the left? I did, yeah. So git checkout dash b creates a new branch and switches to the new branch for you, which is nice. All right, 34 minutes, probably not gonna happen. I know. Um, To grab all of this and because my pseudo code is pretty much done. Let's close this for now. All right, we're going to write a program. Let's open a folder. That grandma just open the whole folder. Uh, 
let's see. You get more commenting by just highlighting everything, holding down the command key, and doing the forward slash. So write a program that can imitate a grandma who's hard of hearing and has these constraints. So since this is mostly pseudocode already, I'm just going to use what I have and translate it to pseudocode. Write a function called deaf grandma. I'm capitalizing everything just so I can quickly refer to it. Write a function called deaf grandma which takes in no parameters. Uh, get an input from the user. Get an input from the user and set as uh, user input. And I just start like overwriting this. If user input is Nothing. Um, respond with what? If user input is a question with any lowercase letters, speak up kid. So let's think about this. If you ask a question with any lowercase letters, so basically if you enter any lowercase letters, because that's that's the constraint that we have here. Uh, then she'll respond with speak up kid. If user input has any lowercase letters, respond with speak up kid. The way that I'm doing quotes really fast is I'm highlighting a section and then just putting quotes around it. Like if you just, you would think that if you highlighted this and you did quotes, it would just replace the whole thing with quotes, but I just do shift, double quote, and then it's surrounded with quotes because they know that this is quote. Uh, if user input is in all uppercase letters, so if user input has no lowercase letters, respond with no, not since 1946. The first time you say goodbye, uh, leaving so soon. So that means no matter what, we have to have some sort of counter. We have to know like how many times this would run. So at the very top, I'm going to say, uh, create a counter variable and set it equal to zero. So um, if this, you can, you can translate this. The first time you say goodbye, she says leaving so soon. So if counter equals zero and your input is goodbye, say leaving so soon, and then include that counter by one. That's my thought. So if counter is equal to zero and uh, user input is goodbye. Uh, respond with leaving so soon and increment counter by one. If counter equals one and user input is goodbye. Respond with later skater and exit the program. How do you feel? It gives me a very, very clear idea of where I'm going. Now, there's a few things like, so I have the steps written out for me, which is really nice. But the issue right now is, like, it, this all seems pretty simple. But then it's get a user input from the user and set it as user input. That is the hardest part of this entire challenge. I don't know how to do that. It seems like the other portion is really easy. Someone else told me earlier that it took them 20 minutes in Python to just learn it and it magically worked. So if we look at uh, considerations for JavaScript, it basically says, well, you need prompt or prompt, and you need to Google it. Um, I will give you a hint, but this is the second one. Um, and this is what's called an external library. A library is nothing more than thousands of lines of code that somebody else wrote to make your life easier. JavaScript by default doesn't, was never created to really run as like inside the terminal. It was always supposed to be run as a web, like on the web itself, which is why if you were to do the same thing in the JavaScript terminal here, because it's in my web browser, it's gonna be really easy to get the input from the user that can just prompt them with like a pop-out screen. 
But what we found over time is that JavaScript is actually really, really good to run on the um, up from the command line, not just on the web of what you see. So this is what's called the front end, the things that you see. The back end is the things that you don't see. We found out that JavaScript is extraordinarily proficient as a back end language as well as a front end language. Um, but it, it doesn't natively support the ability to talk. You'll never have Python code in the front end. Like it just doesn't exist. It's all HTML and CSS. And if that makes no sense to you, it will. Like, so Python doesn't really exist here. This is all HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So Python is good for things like let's bring out, uh, let's do everything in the back end. JavaScript does not do that. So other people, like somebody from Flatiron School, um, decided to write a prompt library, which allows you to get the user, uh, it looks, it looks, it says right here, prompts the user for input. Great. So let's just, getting basic prompt information, getting started with prompt is easy. Let's take a look at this particular thing. I'm just going to copy this and paste it and figure out whatever is going on. So they give me an example, which is really nice. I'm going to comment this out right now. And what I'm doing is I know that this is all pretty simple, except for line three. Line three is really hard. So, okay, let's just take a look. Bar prompt equals require prompt. It seems as if I'm bringing in a library. Okay. Maybe does that mean I have to install a library? So I think so. Um, so whenever I see require and then the name of something, I'm either bringing in another file or I'm bringing in a library from the web. This library doesn't exist on my computer. So I'm going to Google, I don't know, let's take a look. To the very bottom. Why would you put it at the very bottom? Prompt history. I know. <laughs> Installation. <laughs> this should be the very first thing, but it kind of goes to show like, doing this is like, but I'm going to npm install prompt. And as that's what, what this is doing, we installed npm on the very first day, I, and I already have it. Um, but npm is node package manager. This particular service, node package manager, keeps track of every single JavaScript library that is. So you have to register it with uh, the NPM like directory. It's kind of like how your phone number is registered with, with something. So I installed the prompt, and that takes care of line 17. So I create a variable called prompt that brings in the entire prompt library. It looks like I'm going to start the library, and I'm going to get the username and the email from something. All right, I don't really know what this is. It looks prompt.get username and email. And I don't know what any of this is. It says logs of results, command line input received. The username is results.username. The email is result. I don't know. Let's just run it. If I run node.js, uh, is it just a grandma.js? It's going to prompt me to give my username. This is my username. My email is john at codeplatoon.org. And just like that, it seems to be that whenever I type in the first thing, it's saving it and inputting it over here. And when I type in the second thing, it's saving it and putting it right here. So if I can just change this to be like input and maybe get rid of the second thing, because I'm only asking for one, that seems to be what I want. Um, let's say your input was, and it says, Result dot username, result dot email. It looks like whatever I type in gets saved onto this result object. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this result dot input. Let's see if this works. I'm going to run it again. It just says prompt input. Maybe that's what it says right here. And I'm like, hello, the sky is blue. And it says, your input was the hello, the sky is blue. So it looks like this library in particular is able to capture exactly what I want. I'm able to prompt the user to say something, and then I'm going to just put it out over here. So I'm going to get rid of all the comments. It looks like I'm going to grab you know, comments, start the prompt. I know somewhere inside this script, I'm going to use this prompt script. I'm just going to grab that for right now. All right, and we're just going to start. We've written this code. It's down over here, and we're just going to start 
tackling everything one by one. So number one, write a function called def grandma that takes in no parameters. Done. Let's change this. Cons def grandma equals empty and then that arrow. Create a counter variable and set it equal to zero. Is that going to be a let or cons? To be a let because counter is going to change. So I just tackled number two. Get an input from the user and set it as user input. Okay, so let's say let user input equal, I have to move this to the very top of my program. I am going to start the prompt, probably beforehand. And then I have no idea. I'm going to grab this whole thing and just paste it in here for right now. Yes, sir. I am recording this session. I am recording all sessions. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, user input. I'm going to get rid of this. It looks like everything is attached to this. I actually need to move this back a little bit. So I'll say let user input equal result.input. And I'm just going to console.log user input, just to make sure I still have this. And I'm going to call death grandma at the very bottom here. Clear the screen. Node death grandma.js. Oh man, user input is not defined. Maybe I'll move this up here, perhaps. Input i there. And it console law is hybrid. So I do have access to the user input within this prompt over here. All right, so we have it saved as user input, and now we can just tackle all of this stuff. It seems to be pretty simple. Um, let me get rid of this. And we're just going to translate one by one. If user input is nothing, respond with what? If user input is equal to you type in nothing, then respond with what? I'm going to, uh, let's just say console.log what? This is probably not perfect, but we'll figure it out later. Um, if the user has any lowercase letters, respond with speak up if. Else, if user input I don't know. Has any lowercase letters? This is not real code. I'm going to just console log speak up to. All right. So that one's done. Else, if the user input has any uppercase letter, I'm just going to copy this whole thing again. User has any uppercase letters. Console log, no, not since 1946. If counter is zero, else if counter equals zero and user input is equal to goodbye. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to console.log leaving so soon. And then I'm going to counter plus plus. And again, if this is not making any sense and you're moving too fast, I apologize, but this will be recorded. But I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just translating the pseudo code that I have. It's definitely not going to work. We can figure this out later. I just want to get small wins along the way. I want to be like, okay, it looks something like code. We can figure out the implementation just a little bit. Um, else, if counter is equal to one and the user input is goodbye, I'm going to say later skater and exit. Next, I'm going to console.log later. Skater, and then return. Obviously, this is not perfect at the current moment. This is not really a thing. Um, let's see. 
How do I tell if something has lowercase letters? Okay, let's do that then. So if I have else if user input got two uppercase does not equal user input and speak up else if it does user input dot to uppercase does equal user input. I'm going to console log that. Let's see what happens. Would you recommend if you were able to type goodbye to group all the tickets? That is a good that is a good thing to point out. So uh, Marcus pointed out something really good, which was if I type in goodbye and it's all uppercase. This is all uppercase, and this is also uppercase. So this will execute, meaning that the goodbye will never fire off. What is your What is your proposed solution? Then? Just move it up. So you, whenever you do if statements, you want the most restrictive thing to be at the very top. If it is the, and then all the least restrictive things at the very bottom. All right. So let's move this up. So if uh, this one, this one, I think we can keep here, right? Because if you enter nothing, that's okay. Um, let's take a look. If so, you're saying just move these two things at the very top? Uh, yes, and I move the last one. Yeah. All right. So let's read through this. So we bring in the the prompt library. We have a def grandma. It doesn't take any parameters, and we say counter is going to equal zero to start, and then we can start the prompt. Once we get the input, we're going to save it as user dot as user input. If you type in nothing, it responds with what? Uh, if it says uh, if it's the counter is zero and the user input is goodbye, say leaving so soon and increment the counter. Um, otherwise, if the counter equals one and the user input equals goodbye, console block later skater. Okay, this works for me. Let's just see what happens. It's probably going to break. But we'll see. Node def grandma dot js. Enter, and it enters what? Okay, so we just tested that first one. Cool. How about if we do um, uh, hello, grandma? This is all lowercase, or it includes some lowercase. Speak up, kid, and then it exits. It seems to be exiting a lot, so I need to figure out what's going on with that. But let's try the all uppercase. Hi, grandma. No, it's not since 1946. Now let's try the goodbye. Leaving so soon but then it exits. So I'm noticing that we're able to capture the user input. We're able to run through all this if statement pretty well. But the issue right now is it's exiting after one time. Thoughts? Run def grandma again on Good. each of those. I did, I did it right there. Of, of everything here? I've heard two solutions. One of them is just run the whole program once more. That's not a bad way of going about it. The other one is called continue. So you're saying on all of these, just do continue? No, just uh, at the end of it, when you want to. Or oh, right here? When you return it, then you want to finish it. Yes. So it'll be continued after the statement. Any of the statement would be ending. Right. So any of the statement would be ending. Let's find out. Let's try this continue. I've never tried it. It doesn't mean it's wrong or right. Okay, they don't like it. Sorry, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if the counter is, yeah, yeah. That might have been the So, like a while loop. We can do a while loop. So, while a counter is less than two. One, one. Well, count is less than one. Yeah, because it's good. Yeah. Right, let's take all of this code. I'm going to control command go up. And it looks like it formats nicely for me already. So you're saying we want to do a while loop because we just want to keep it, like, you want to keep this loop running until counter is, well, counter is less. Yeah, it might, it might be less than two. It's like if one of the kids is one. Oh, yeah, yeah, while it's less than two. Okay, let's see it. 
Hopefully this works clear. Node deathgrandma.js. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's crashing. I'm going to stop it before. Okay. So this is the issue is that every single time, this is, this is going to prompt us a billion times. So it is what's called an infinite loop. But there's, this will always evaluate the truth. I'm never really able to enter anything for some reason. So I don't think the while is going to work. So let me move this all back. So I heard one solution that I kind of like, which is um, just run death grandma again and again and again every single time that you want to do it. All right. Um, so if you entered this, how to log what, and then run death grandma again. Except if you're leaving so soon, increment the counter, run death grandma again. Uh, this one's going to return, so I don't want to run death grandma again. This one, death grandma. And I do see one huge issue with this, and I want to stop before I do that. Does anyone see a giant issue with this? It will lose the counter in memory. Yeah. Yep. So let's say that we enter, uh, we, we type in goodbye, the, we run this program, counter is equal to zero, and I write goodbye for the first time. Counter is zero, makes sense. User input is goodbye. It'll console log, increment the counter, and run death grandma again. What happens on line 12? It resets the counter back to zero. Yep, that's exactly it. So set it outside the, the set it outside the function. There you go. Set it. Yeah. Uh, but doesn't that give you a global variable? What's that? Like that's an addition to global variable. That's okay. That was the one. The other option. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to, I, uh, let me do it this way and then we'll do it. Yeah. So I can do no death there, like this work. Please don't embarrass me, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this blows up. It blows up on deathgrandma.js line 33. Do I have an extra one? Oh, I must, must have an extra one. Nope, something else is broken. Let us. Oh, I have an extra one because I did the while loop in the scratch. Yeah. Uh, does anyone see what is wrong with it? I do not. Um, this one closes. This one. This closes this. I need one more, perhaps. Uh, could be. Let's, let's make this a little smaller so I can fix it real quick. Uh, this closes that. You need a closing bracket. You need another one. You're not closing the the function bracket. Oh, I'm just, just going to keep adding this until it goes away. Uh, which line? I see it. Instead of running the entire function, you can just keep running the function. Uh, we tried that. That's what I did. I didn't work. Okay. So you're saying, I, am I missing something? Okay, we have to delete that. This one. Okay. And then put it uh, uh, right there. Right. It's, uh, yeah, it's right there. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah, I must have deleted something. Okay, let's see if this works. So considering I have 10 minutes. Input. Uh, let's try goodbye. Goodbye, please work. Later skater. Okay, hey. let's try it. What? And it keeps popping. Hello. Speak up kid, right? And then hello. No, not since 1946. Goodbye, bang. Goodbye, bang again. And then later skater. All right, so this is a this is a way to solve it. This is not the only way to solve it. Um, but just to make this a little bit better, uh, some people were mentioning that, hey, the counter is a global variable at this point, meaning that it's outside of the scope of just death grandma, which is 
it's fine just because this is a small learning exercise more than anything else. Is there a way that we can bring this in? And what? Yeah, um, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it at a later one while I was doing the first group. I did this at Roman numerals. Yeah. All I did was to set uh, basically the counter uh, inside of the argument. Oh. Yeah, and them. since it's just a Boolean value too, it's just an if or an and kind of thing. You can use true or false. This is one way to do it. So Def Grandma will take a argument called counter, and if you don't pass anything in, it will default to this one. We've seen this before, right? The default parameter. Oh. Okay. In the case, so what's happened here is I've Def Grandma as a method, and then this these are where all the parameters go. So this is the equivalent of saying function Def Grandma and uh, Line 10 and line 14 are the same thing. Basically, it's saying that there's going to be a parameter that's optional that's passed in. If you don't pass anything in, it will automatically equal to zero. So counter will equal zero every single time. So when counter equals zero, I can just run everything as normal. But once I get to uh, once I get to def grandma, once I get to the first goodbye, I'm going to run def grandma again, but I'm going to pass in one so that it's not defaulted to zero. That, that way, when I type in uh, counter one again, it's going to say counter equals one, and user input equals goodbye, and later stated goodbye. This is probably not perfect, but hello, hello, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, this one actually does blow up, I, I just realized, because yeah, if I type something else, then it rewrites it. And it's just another way of doing it. Um, yeah. John, question? Yes, sir. <clears throat> when you're on a professional work site, what are the uh, considerations you have as a developer with regard to uh, what code or libraries you can go out and import? off the internet and incorporate into your company's code. Sure. Who has to give clearance on that? Sure. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let me reiterate that question just for the recording. Um, the question was, in this particular example, we did prompt. We brought in the prompt library externally. Now, the prompt library is not something that we wrote internally. Somebody else wrote it, it meaning that it could have malicious code within it. Generally speaking, on very, very large um, companies like PayPal, Google, Amazon, they are really worried about people bringing in the code. So what you'll do is if you're going to bring an external library in, either you have to read through all the code yourself and figure out if that's good or not, uh, or you will just pass it off to your security team who will do the exact same thing. In the case that they find out that it is good to go, they will take a copy of that code, the source code at that particular moment, and put it behind their own firewall so that whenever you require prompts, it's not reaching out to NPM, but it's reaching out to the internal source. All right, so this one does work now. If I pass in counter every single time, because then I actually keep track of the counter every single time. So let's just verify that before we push it up. Hello, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye, and it exits. This is one way to solve this particular problem. It's not the prettiest way. We could refactor this and make it nicer, uh, but we don't really have a ton of time for that. All right, let's push this one up. Let's learn a little bit about Git, and then I will be. So how do I check the status of everything? Git status. Git status. And you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of extra stuff. And this is where I don't want you to do Git add space dot, because node modules is a bunch of folders that, it's a bunch of code that and when you ran npm install prompt, it brings in a bunch of extra JavaScript code. So if I were to add, I'm not going to add it. Trust me when I say this. Actually, you can take a look for yourself. This is node modules. All of this is what powers prompt. Because prompt is powered by colors, which is powered by cycle, which is colored by powered by blob. Like I don't, I don't really know, but each one of these has like dependencies on other things. Just because you it, it works on your machine here, you don't want to commit all of this extra code because when you bring it in, it's actually all of this extra stuff. So I only want to add specifically the files that I changed. 
So we can make this a little bit bigger. It looks like I modified deafgrandma.js. It's red, so I'm going to do git add, and I just want that file. Double click, copy paste, git status one more time, turn from red to green. So basically, I've taken deafgrandma, put it inside the box. Now I want to seal the box with some tape. How do I do that? Commit dash M. I want something descriptive. Uh, finished. Deaf grandma in JS. Now I want to ship it off to the post office so they can send it out. Git push origin what? Uh, nope, nope, not master. So it goes git push origin. That origin, if I run a command called git remote dash V, origin is just a synonym for this. Git remote dash V. You can push to more than one place. I can, or because we cloned it down from JM def grandma, that's the origin, that's where it originated from. But I could also add like um, Julia Platoon if I wanted to. I could push to uh, Amazon so that it like, gets posted on the web. I can push to Heroku, which we're gonna end up doing. There are, there's more than one place. But just understand that when you do git push origin, it's just a synonym for this particular URL. Origin is where it originated from. Git push origin, and then the name of your branch, which is John Solution of Julia. And we do want to start practicing this, this branching stuff. So now I push it off. It's now in the air somewhere. If I go back up here to JM217 slash dev grandma. You'll notice this thing pops up right here that says you recently pushed a branch. Would you like to merge it in? Remember, we made it, I made a photocopy of my photocopy, and I'm saying these changes are what I'd like to merge into my master. So I'm gonna make a pull request saying that I have made some changes and I feel like it's good enough to be put into production. I'm going to point it towards Juliet Platoon Deaf Grandma Master, and I'm gonna pair it against my port uh, repositories. John Solution Juliet branch. You'll see that there are 12 pull requests right now. If I hit the create pull request here, there are now 13. Click on that, you'll see my solution at the very top. 